Okay, for those of you who are interested uh, in the six and a half horsepower uh, um, Honda, I call them block splitter motors, uh, converted to uh, uh, aircraft use. <laughs> Here's a, a few uh, closer up shots. Uh, now there's a, a, a clip of the uh, a shot of the uh, of the motor mounts. Now Stinnison made them. I think they're I think they're steel. They're very, they're quite heavy anyway. Um, uh, heavier than they really need to be. Uh, they could be, of course, made out of aluminum tubing or whatever. Um, and there's other ways of uh, uh, fastening the motor on too to the to the back. Um, I replaced the. Uh, uh, the, the the old motor mounts are one and an eighth, to, uh, and these ones are three quarters. So I, I gained a bit there. Plus there's a a, a half inch uh, aluminum spacer that staged the old Rotax motors. I had uh, anything to help get this motor back. Uh, in fact, these legs could be spaced out further, uh, a, a little bit further, and the whole motor could be moved back almost a, almost another inch. Um, the motors are, are fairly heavy, of course, and uh, with those heavy motor mounts. And the simple fact that the motor is, is sits ahead further than the old Rotax, uh, of course, increases the arm on the on the CFG. So it uh, it makes it quite a difference. I ended up putting five pounds of of uh, weight on the tail, and it flies hands off now. It, it flies nicely. Um, anyway, the motors are. Uh, uh, just off the shelf motors, but uh, have uh, been modified with uh, aluminum uh, flywheels and uh, uh, connecting rods and heavier valve springs, uh, uh, rocker arms, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, Ged did a, a, a pretty extensive uh, modification to them. Uh, he thinks that they produce about 15 horsepower. Uh, I don't know why that, that's 15 a piece. Uh, I think he may be a little optimistic, although they do, they do give the, the, the plane a, a more, a noticeably more uh, power all across the board pretty well. A little bit on takeoff, I think, and uh, a bit on climb. Cruise, I think, is up about four, four or five miles an hour. I think about 10% more than the than the old straight uh, the old straight uh, 185s um, he, he built his own uh, uh, um, uh, gear reductions they're about one to 1.8 I believe uh, machined them machined the pulleys uh, uh, the amount of time he spent on on them alone it's you couldn't you couldn't buy them actually uh, Apparently, the, there's a company in India called AC, uh, AC Aviation, I believe, and uh, they they make uh, uh, gear reductions. I, I think for about six hundred dollars, that'll likely be American too, and then there'll be shipping on it. But even so, with uh, with the mods to the engine and say for six hundred dollars and another six hundred dollars to mod the engines, you know, for fifteen hundred dollars, you an engine, you've got. Uh, You've you've got a oh yeah and then there's a Tillotson carburetor to put on that's another I don't know how many dollars anyway uh, you know for uh, certainly a certainly affordable um, alternative to uh, some of the other engines that are selling for the the power parachute guys you know they're, they're three thousand dollars an engine which you know, it makes a pretty, pretty big bill, I guess, for putting motors on a on a laser. I I don't know. I guess it depends on how much you want to spend or whatever. But I'll tell you, these these motors do a really nice job. They're quieter for one thing. Uh, they seem to work good. They start fairly easily, although the, with the Tillotson carbs, it makes some. Uh, a little, a little.
trickier uh, on account of the fact that uh, the fuel will drain back, of course, and there's not fuel in the carburetor when you go to start them, so you either have to prime them or, you know, pull a few times to get the get the, the fuel up. I, I think a, a Makuni carburetor, a different setup, a Makuni, Makuni carburetor and a Makuni fuel pump, the 22 uh, millimeter throat on a Makuni, um, might be a might be a better setup. Um, anything with fuel in a uh, that keeps the fuel in the carburetor that will start and run for 10 seconds will will activate the the fuel pump, uh, uh, the pulse fuel pump, and get fuel to the carburetor, and away they go. Um, but anyway, it's not impossible to start them. I, just, I use a squirt bottle with gas, and and uh, they'll. they'll just, you know, if it sits for uh, two or three days or a week, it takes a half a dozen pulls to get them going. But anyway, it's not a real big deal. Um, but I like the way the motors work. They uh, they they pull real good. I tried uh, uh, a bit of slow flight with them. They'll tick over. I couldn't believe it. I idle along at 4,000 RPM, uh, the nose high, and I'm puttering around at, at I don't know, 28 or 30 miles an hour, holding altitude, couldn't believe it. Quiet as a mouse. Um, slow, uh, that's a slow flight, uh, uh, rate of climb, I, I, I didn't have a, a, a good reading on it, but it's certainly every bit as good as the as Rotax, and, and I, I think probably better. It's likely, certainly 350 feet and maybe 400. Um, I, uh, I've, I've got a rate of climb uh, gauge that I'll, I'll, I won't install it, but I'll take it with me sometime. I'm up just to get a reading on it. Uh, what else? Um, oh, slow engine, uh, one engine. I idled back and, and I flew around for 10 minutes, I think, on one engine, and I managed to hold altitude. In fact, I think at one time, I'd, it wasn't a thermally day either, and I think I actually gained about 50 feet, which is, Pretty doggone good. If if you can if you can get around on one engine on one of these things, you can. I know this thing would certainly pull itself a long way. Um, uh, anyway, uh, big props, 40, 44 inch props. Uh, I don't know what the uh, degree of pitch is, but I think it's probably up in the 30s. You guys, but they take it quite a bite. You get. <laughs> Get the camera on what the heck I'm looking at. Um, I don't know what else there'd be that the the uh, um, low oil uh, pressure switch is disabled. Um, I'm kind of concerned about maybe climbing with the oil. I think that. Uh, I think the connecting rod would would still encounter the oil. It'd have to be pretty doggone low on on oil before you wouldn't you wouldn't have any splash splash oiling, of course. Uh, anyway, I when I check them, I, I I've, the oil is right up to the top of here, which I think is way too much. This is maybe one reason why this uh, uh, tappet cover breather is 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 uh, spitting a bit of oil out. Uh, the heads are re-drilled, or drilled, uh, the uh, oiling uh, holes in the heads are, are uh, not in the heads, uh, uh, anyway, to, to enable the uh, tapas to get more, uh, to more oil, and uh, I think it's pu pumping so much oil up in there, it just, it just boots it out. Anyway, the other engine, this engine doesn't do it, but, um, Anyway, I, uh, I rooted this this vent up high like this in the hopes that it'll it'll uh, drain back down. Uh, this engine, for some reason or another, doesn't do it. But they run nice. They, uh, I feel quite comfortable flying it. I I I, uh, I, uh, I don't have any nervousness at all about cranking them up and going for a cruise. Um, so that's the story on them, guys. Uh, I think they're they're a viable uh, alternative for the old Rotax. Time will tell, of course. I've, uh, 
Ged Stennison said that he uh, he put about 25 hours on them, and I've put I've put close to 10 hours on them now. Uh, there are no hitches or glitches or anything. Um, so that's that's the story, guys. Good luck with it. Anybody wants to wants to try it.